unidentifiable flying object. <laughs> UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFO. Something out there. Close enough to be observed. What could it be? and gentlemen welcome to another episode of ufo no uh your break from the propaganda the bad news the political nonsense and have some fun talking about topics like what are we talking about i totally forgot oh psychological or psychoelectronic weapons and mind control that's what it is my god i almost blew my mind there um so that's what we're talking about and joining me on the show today again back for another episode is my good friend nate what's up nate how are you man hey how's it going buddy good dude glad to have you back another episode bro it's really exciting man this is fun it thank is, you for having me it is fun and i'm so glad to have you man i always i love your insight last show was great man we had a great ta- uh, discussion if you have not listened to the previous episode uh, all about artificial intelligence. Go check it out everywhere you find your favorite podcast. Um, but uh, I want to thank you all for joining the show. Uh, we're in the stratosphere, a little over 107,000 feet cruising, and it is clear skies, baby. If you like the show, be sure to share this episode. Give us a very nice review everywhere you can, Spotify, Apple, all those good places. Make sure and hit that subscribe button if you're on the Rumble, if you're on the YouTubes. That really does help a lot. And don't forget, you can also go to patreon.com slash podcast where you get to donate and you get access to all these episodes Plus bonus episodes every week, all ad free and every single bit of my loyalty. Uh, lots of love, lots of love. And I'm trying to add new stuff all the time. So uh, so keep with us. Also, um, in the portal to everything UFO, no link in the show notes. You can follow that to go get yourself some sweet merch. Go check that out. Going to be dropping some new designs very soon. Again, keep in touch. Uh, follow that link in the show notes. I love every single one of you. Uh, let's get into this, shall we? Um, so again, psychoelectronic weapons and mind control. Um, first of all, there's a lot of people that don't want to believe, either don't want to believe or don't don't believe in general, don't know about it, that mind control is basically real. It's It's for the most part proven. Uh, going on forever. Going on forever. We have hypnosis, which is a form of mind control. A lot of people know that by the, you know, the sideshow entertainment style hypnotist. But then you have, you know, the therapeutic hypnotist, which is uh, tries to get people over trauma. You have um, different type of hypnotism that is involved in breaking addiction, things like that. And then, of course, you have the more woo-woo side, the one that I'm very skeptical of, which is uh, hypnotic regression involving UFOs, uh, alien abductions, because it's really opening your mind up to be written on. And with places like the CIA, the agencies like this, we know that they've spent a crazy amount of time and a crazy amount of money and resources not only experimenting and researching this, but actually implementing it in different ways. Um, And keep in mind, the CIA, this is one agency that we know has utilized these things. It's one out of at least 18 other intelligence agencies that are known about, that are known about. And this is all according to the, uh, what, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. So that's only what they're telling us exists, these intelligence agencies so 18 of them at least and one of them that we know of for a fact has experimented in this and has implemented this and uh and a lot of this work comes from a lot of you that have listened to the show uh which again thank you uh knows about operation paperclip and a lot of this Mind control, experimentation, things like this. What's that? Lots of Nazis. Lots of Nazis. Lots of Nazis. That's right. That's right. 
That's right, exactly. Nazis! <laughs> and uh, so, so here you have Operation Paperclip, 1,600 Nazi scientists given full immunity for their war crimes. Full immunity. Bringing over everything, all the science, all the technology, all the experimentation done in, during the Holocaust by the Nazis, brought over to the U.S., brought into established because mind you cia wasn't a, a wasn't around before that so with no, I mean, like you can't expect us to go in there and be like hey let's just burn all the evidence we don't yeah. want nothing, nothing to do with this i mean everything they were studying the research the technology of course we're going to get our hands into that absolutely and i'm and i i wonder sometimes it's a very dark thought but i wonder about the the potential for us to have bartered that you know, allowed for immunity. I mean, we did it with 1,600 scientists. Who's to say we didn't do it with some very high-ranking Nazi officials, maybe including Hitler himself? Huh? What they say is what alive in Argentina. That's living right. in Argentina, Brazil, Chile. There's evidence all over these Argentina countries. Oh, yep. Yeah. There's evidence all over that that he was at least there, and there's some evidence that he was there into the 70s. So it's amazing. yeah, amazing. So so that's what we that's just the very beginning of this time period of when all this stuff seems to start happening. You have evidence of these agencies that are testing their results on for one US soldiers uh that we we know of different experimentations. Uh there's actually I don't know if you're familiar with this. The uh the the whole brainwashing uh, uh, Korean POWs. Do you know about this story? U.S. soldiers that were supposedly brainwashed uh, by Korea and uh, and then we rescued them and then we went in and I, I have the whole story behind this, but do you know yeah, about go ahead. that? Yeah. Go so, ahead. Here, so here's the story. So uh, Korea and China, Soviet Union, all started to... Um, throw allegations at the U.S. military that they were using biological weapons during the Korean War, which for a lot of people, because look, I, you know, for a lot of people, they forget it. That's why it's called the Forgotten War. So it's between 1950 and 1953. Um, the Korean War, China, Soviet Union, and North Korea are all saying U.S. is using biological weapons during the war. Started in 1951. The story gets out, covered by the press, and all of a sudden, they start to investigate it in 1952. Um, of course, the uh, you know DOD, Department of Defense, all these, you know, Secretary of State, all these people start saying, oh, no, 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 it's not true, it's not true, uh, it's propaganda, it's lies. Now, they were saying we would never use biological weapons in North Korea. Now, I want to bring up something. Operation Big Buzz. Are you familiar with this? No, I'm not. Operation Big Buzz. This is legit. Happened. Okay. Operation Big Buzz was an experiment by the U.S. government in 1955. Mind you, basically roughly after this is, this is said to have taken place in Korea. So 1955, they released millions of infected uh, mosquitoes, okay, into Georgia. You know, I, I've heard about that. They did the testing and they came up with that. Go ahead. Yeah, and it was to see <laughs> how effective insects were in biological warfare by tracking biting habits on citizens. What the fuck? Are we still doing that, though? I mean, I have heard, like, in recent stories, I can't quote me, but I have heard that we are still, you know, working on different mosquito-related warfare. Uh, it would not surprise. I mean, look, we have where they are trying to control the minds of uh, hacking the minds of fruit flies. I mean, that would be a good way to spread a disease. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Absolutely. So here we have China, Soviet Union, North Korea, all accusing the U.S. of using biological warfare. 
that in 1955, we have confirmed evidence that they did do it in the U.S. So I would not be surprised one bit if they absolutely did this uh, during the Korean War. Wow. But here's, here's what the, 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 uh, the evidence is based on this. So 1953, China, North Korea produce two of these captured U.S. Marine Corps pilots that are saying this is what happened. So they're U.S. Marines that are saying the U.S. used biological warfare. Colonel Frank Schwabel uh, said the basic objective was at the time to get under field conditions, various elements of bacteriological warfare and possibly expand, excuse me, expand field tests at a later date in an element of regular combat operations. Um, then that they flew B-29s into or onto uh, airfields in Korea, um, Okinawa, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. They flew B-52s to Korea from American-occupied Okinawa in 1951. And so the U.S. claimed that, well, this U.S. Marine Schwabel is being tortured and being brainwashed to give this statement by uh, Koreans, okay? So that's what the U.S. military says. So then another one, uh, Colonel Walker Bud Mahirin said the, roughly the same thing. So then after these POWs get released back into the U.S., all of a sudden... They start retracting their stories, claiming that they were brainwashed by their captors. Okay? Yep. But here's the deal. There's theories, there's a lot of people that believe that these POWs were brainwashed, but not by the Koreans, by the U.S. So what they were telling when they came back from Korea was the truth, that the U.S. was using biological warfare in, in Korea, but that they were brainwashed when they got back to re uh, retract their statements and say that it was, that they were brainwashed by the Koreans. So I know that's a little, wow. I made that a little bit confusing because I chopped it up a little bit. <laughs> well, no. I follow along with it through. It just totally makes sense. You're like, hey, welcome back to the stage, Jim Bob. Here you go. And uh, you don't remember none of this shit. Yeah. This is how it works. Exactly. And that, I mean, we can see that happen all the time. Yeah. Even as we go through into the stories, I don't want to ruin as far as the storyline goes, but I mean, you see this all the time throughout history. People just have that change of heart. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden, shit's different. Yeah. It's very interesting either way. Either way, it's very interesting. And once again, the coincidence... Coincidence? I think not! ...is that the CIA is researching this around this same time and doing biological warfare. They've got all this stuff. But we know that it's around this time in the 50s that they started researching mind control. And instead of using, like, what they say, they say the North Koreans were using uh, torture. Uh, instead, the CIA used drugs. Now, here's a good reason why you would use drugs. There's no physical evidence. No physical evidence of torture, control, manipulation of any kind. It's drug-induced. And then once you use these drugs that put the mind into a vulnerable state, which I'm not, that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you want to use these drugs to put your mind so you can find answers in your life. You know, microdosed LSD has been shown to be actually beneficial in a lot of ways. I don't know about heroin, but definitely LSD, psilocybin, things like that. But it's also known that in these moments, your mind is open, is, is vulnerable. And so that's where they combine these drugs with hypnosis and fear. and But they never got to leave a mark. Never a bruise, 
Never. You don't got to pull a tooth. None of that shit. So it makes it very easy. It makes it very easy for them to cover their tracks. Um, so in the 1950s and the 60s, the the CIA, this is their uh, this is their whole cop out is they say they claim that yes, they did research. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 we did it. But we didn't find any evidence. We found no evidence of it working, so we're not going to do it anymore. That's what they said. They said they did research into mind control, but they found no evidence to justify continuing the program. Oh, really? Oh, it continued. Oh, yeah. It, for a long time. Absolutely. It still Absol- absolutely. I 100% believe that it's still going on. 100%. But now... This was Operation Bluebird and Operation Artichoke. Yep. And that all gave birth to this MK Ultra mind control race. Mm-hmm. That's right. There were multiple programs under different names that utilized this. They and that's what they do. They're doing it with the UFO stuff. They change the departments. They change the program names, the project names, A Tip, Project Blue Book, all these things. But it's the same stuff. It just allows them to get more funding. And shuffle things around so there's less of a trail. You know, oh, we did away with that program, but now we have this program, and it's actually doing the right thing. Oh, really? So, yeah, absolutely. They That's that's what they do all the time. Again, that's what they're doing with the UFO stuff now. They're just shuffling shit around. So, in fact, they just now cla- reclassified UFOs. Uh, or, or, I'm sorry, reclassified the department. Name. So instead of ATIP, again, now they're doing away with ATIP, which was just the continuation of the original, which was Project Blue Book. And so they are just continuing that on. So now instead, they're doing away with ATIP, and now it's some AAOO, whatever the fuck. Just recategorize, refund. Yeah, exactly. So super, super, it's just, you know, this is what they do. Um, and then also during this time, this is why there's it's very, very difficult. And I believe this is the case with a lot of these things about uh, the nature of reality and our world and the mind and all this stuff that they really don't want the average man to have access to. During the 1950s uh, and 60s, while they're doing research, the New York Times starts to do a piece on MK Ultra. And they actually put it out to the public that this project exists and that they are doing this to the public. This is when media actually did their fucking job and actually dug into shit and found stories and brought things to the public that they needed to know. No way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, then you have, you know, you have a Snowden and you have an Assange type situation and now nobody wants to come forward. Oh. Nobody wants to be the guy to break these stories. It's no wonder the media is a fucking cowards because they see what happens to Julian Assange and they're like, fuck that. <laughs> I'm not getting involved. So the CIA was, the, was absolutely successful in deterring people from digging to the truth. You end up with a heart attack. Yeah, <laughs> no shit, exactly. So the New York Times brings this to the public and all of a sudden... All of a sudden, there's a purge of records by the CIA, and I believe a lot of these departments. And you know what their cop-out was? They had a burgeoning paper problem. A burgeoning (laughs) paper problem. Like, are you kidding me? Give me a fucking break. Yeah, and we'll go get more ink. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Oh, my God. Unreal. So you have this huge purge of records having to do with anything about this. This is why the paper trail sucks on this stuff, you know. And, well, they uh, actually had all these documents burned back in, what was it, uh, 1967 when it was all coming to light. Uh, yeah. I can't remember his name. I apologize. But we had all the documents burned up. And so, honestly, the only way you're going to get anything from most of where this comes from would be a deathbed confession 
yep. or anything of recent, you know, but that's so split up now. Good luck. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Well, and that's the thing, you know, people look at like FOIA requests, you know, and they're always basically they're always looking for a paper trail. That's the only thing a FOIA request is going to do is find you a paper trail. Well, guess what? There's not always a paper trail, especially nowadays. Like they know better. <laughs> they know better. I mean, you got shit coming out from the 60s and 70s that was a paper trail and you've got the government going, oh, fuck. In some situation, I think a lot of it is government controlled leaks. But, uh, yeah. So then you have, at the same time, so you have this purge of records. You have another loose end, which is Dr. Frank Olson, who for a CIA researcher was pretty publicly against MKUltra. Um, and he was found dead. Fell from his window in 1953, around the same time that all this... Uh, purging of information well if your brain is in has information on that they're going to purge you too and uh, no, i feel bad i i, I got to restate what i said earlier because i had some notes i just couldn't find them. so it was 1975 richard helm had ordered all the documents to be destroyed yeah as far as okay ultra go so i apologize i can find my notes yeah no no you're <laughs> absolutely right so, and it's all throughout. In fact, in the 60s, all the way to the 70s, they were, I would imagine, they were purging all this stuff, you know, throughout. Oh, the, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, they have this stuff public. Of course, they're going to purge all that, retract statements and yep. deny plausibility. Oh, I'm a little hazy on the subject. That's right. And that's why everything is compartmentalized, you know, these days. Nobody has the full picture. So, you know, you don't have, you have a lessened risk mm -hmm. of it getting out. But, uh, but yeah, if so Frank Olson suicided. Uh, and the only reason we know that is because 22 years after his death, uh, the CIA, through FOIA requests and various things getting out, uh, was forced to admit that agents had given Olson a drink spiked with LSD right before his death. But the only thing that did was reclassify his death as a drug-induced suicide. So still suicide, but drug-induced. So it's like, hold on a second. You drug-induced him. So is that not murder? Oh, just a little slap on the wrist. Don't do it again. Yeah. Oh, not even that. They basically, they're just like, oh, it wasn't us. Yeah, we gave him the yeah. LSD. We didn't tell him to fly out the window. It's like, you motherfuckers. But who goes running full speed through glass windows? It's like, hey, swan dive. Yeah, you know, especially exactly. That's right. Exactly. So then you have, after that, you have uh, in it all attached to this, you know, loose ends. So you mentioned uh, again, seven, what was it, 75? You have more purging of records. Then in 93, you have a CIA director, William Colby, who was accidentally drowned, big quotes, accidentally drowned after being subpoenaed to testify in the investigation of Dr. Olson's death. So talk about tying up loose ends, man. All the way into 93 covering their tracks. Crazy. And w I do a, do a deep dive into this uh, in a previous episode. I can't remember the name exactly, but it's uh, researchers, uh, the dangers of being a researcher or some shit like that. But I go through an, an entire list of people that have, including Phil uh, Schneider, OG, that... Um, he died from talking about the underground bases, Dulce, New Mexico being a, a big part of that. There's a whole bunch of these researchers that have been quote unquote suicided and almost every single case, the families are like, hold on. But then it just completely goes silent. No investigations, no closure. These families go quiet. There's no, there's, you know, you would think there would be an uproar from a lot of these families. Why don't we hear from them? 
I have no doubt they're paid off or they're silenced themselves. Exactly. Yeah. Because why would you stop with the one dude when their family's like, nah, nah, why wouldn't you go there too? Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's a reason why we don't see them, but, but yeah, go check out that previous episode. It's uh it's insane how many people and it's, it, you know, people say, Oh, it's very uh, suspicious. It's more than suspicious. It's uh it's blatant. It's very, to me, it's very obvious what's going on. And that's well, why you, I, I they just don't believe in coincidence, you know? Yeah. Coincidence is not a thing. No. I, I mean, <laughs> exactly. Again, again. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's very, it's very, very interesting. But you have this propaganda around this time. You have this propaganda start to be put out that starts to label truth seekers, people that start to look behind it, ask questions as to what's going on instead of just believing what we're told. And so all of a sudden this term conspiracy theorist starts to become popularized. Excuse me, starting to label people conspiracy theorists just for asking questions into the evidence that doesn't add up. And that's really what it is. People that see holes in these official statements, these narratives, and say, hold on, hold on. What about this? What about that? A conspiracy theorist. So now we have a society of people, a lot of people, that just don't want to believe any of it. They don't want to believe any of this exists. They don't want to believe things like MK, MK Ultra happened. They don't want to believe things like Operation Paperclip happened. They don't want to believe that we not only continued Nazi experiments, there are theories that we were using eugenics back in the 20s when it came to mentally handicapped, when it came to homosexuals, when it came to anything that was deemed outside the norm. During the 1920s, there was massive culling, killings, euthanizations of these people. Well, and also back then, they just called it schizophrenia, and it was just a blank, blanket name for everything. Everything. For everything. Yep. And like, oh, you got schizophrenia, you know? Yeah. And it, so many damn experiments, they would, oh, it was disgusting. Disgusting. And so this is back in the 20s. So now you have the Nazis in the 30s, late 30s, 40s that are doing this. So there's a lot of people that say maybe the Nazis got it from us. This idea of, of eugenics, you know, crazy. So anyways, there's a lot of shit to this. There's a lot of background to this, but people don't want to believe it. They want to believe this rosy, cushy, ideal world exists that, you know, you're safe in your home and, and, you know, it's just, which I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but there's a lot of things that are illusions that people just don't want to look at. And you mention MK ultra to random people and, and see what kind of reactions you get. Just walk up to random people and say, Hey, do you know about MK ultra and watch the reactions you get? Very few people will be like, Oh yeah, that shit's crazy. Very few. Most people will be like, what's that? How do we not know about that? How is a general public, is it not crucial that people know that their government experiment on them? And I, I don't mean did, do. Is that the San Diego fog or San Francisco oh, fog? Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, and for those that aren't familiar, in the 1950s, uh, the U.S. military sat out in the San Francisco Bay and popped toxic fumes into the San Francisco fog as it rolled in. What in the actual fuck? It was classified as a success, and it went through multiple counties, not just San Francisco. And I believe there's one fatality out of it for sure. And it's just, Wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> exactly. nobody, bats, nobody bats an eye. Like, hey, don't mind the red fog coming in, guys. Breathe deep. <laughs> That's right. That's right. 
It's it's just crazy to think about. I mean, look, yeah, okay, here's here's a list of crazy shit. All right? Let's and I've done this. I've done this on previous episodes, but let's fucking do it again cuz it's it's a doozy. Let's let's start here. Tuskegee syphilis study. You familiar with this one? I'm not. No. The Tuskegee experiments, which is actually funny because this is uh, it, uh what is it? It's the uh, ah, I'm not even into it because I can't remember. But uh, the U.S. Public Health Service actually did this in 1932. A total of 600 African American men were involved in a study. With uh, 399 of them were given syphilis, and 201 without. Those with syphilis were denied treatment for the disease so the government could watch and see what the effects were. What the hell? Dude, that's a real study. This is 1932. My God. The men were never given the option to participate. They didn't even know they were doing it. And they were never told it was an experiment. Now, here's the thing. The experiment was only supposed to last six months, but it lasted up to, take a guess. Take a guess how long you think it lasted. Now, it does have an end date, but how long do you think it lasted? Well, the government never does anything quickly, so I got to <laughs> say at least three years. Forty years. Oh, God. Forty years. Now, when penicillin became the main drug to treat syphilis, they were denied access. They were denied access. Now, penicillin went to the public, dude. And the patients specifically involved in the Tuskegee experiments were denied access to penicillin and weren't even given the option to opt out in any way. That's some cold hearty, like, sorry, Ted, you can't have your stuff. We're not done watching the deterioration. Yeah. Hang on a couple of years. Yep. Maybe next year. In exchange, in exchange, they were given free medical medical exams and a burial service. Dude, that's like that's like a t shirt that says, I exp- I participated in the Tuskegee experiments and all I got was this goddamn shirt. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, what in the actual fuck? So then a lawsuit is filed later. And of course, the government granted free burial services. But, dude, they weren't even going to give it to them free. They weren't even going to give them free burial services for this. Nothing. That's one, dude. That's one. All right. So then you have a malaria study done in Stateville Penitentiary. You know about this one? Uh, no, I do not. The U.S. government uh, in the 1940s, over 400 prisoners were illegally infected with malaria. And the goal was to test experimental drugs to find a cure for it. The, the other crazy thing is that they were administered by the prisoners themselves. So these guys are going around giving each other the shot? Each other the shot. The prisoners also decided which one of them would take part in the experiment. So the prisoners were given this with the power to decide who got it. What? Was that like a gold star award system for like every week of good behavior? All right, Jimmy, you get your gold star. You get to shake someone with some malaria. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> like what the fuck? What the fuck? Jeez. I'm going to say that a lot. I mean, that's going to be my whole thing. Like, what in the actual fuck? Crazy. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So then then you have then you have the Navy-sponsored beef blood transfusions. All right? So uh, 1942, uh, the Navy did a secret project with biological weapons to infect prisoners with cow blood to detect a protein that could be used in the event of an upcoming war. So 64 subjects were infected with cow blood and they all, all of them 
suffered catastrophic effects ending in death. I think Mary Shelley would be horribly disappointed with our government. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah, taking body parts of dead people and sew them together is child's play. Right? Like, child's we're just going to start injecting people at the military. Yeah, let's just see how this blood works. Yeah. Seriously, like, common science would tell you that's not going to work. Yeah, exactly. Crazy, man. Crazy. So then you have plutonium testing where in the 1940s, again, um, plutonium was, let's see, what was it? It was, oh, it was done on the mentally ill, right? So what it was is they would, what was it? Um, Are you going to talk about that cereal? That was so sad. I can't believe it. I, that's dark. Dude, crazy. Yeah, so it was uh, mentally ill patients were given doses of radioactive plutonium injected with it. And just so they could study the effects of plutonium on the body. Secret program. Now, here's what's crazy. Most of the patients didn't die. So because they didn't die, the secrecy and all that, and without the patients even knowing what they were doing, there was no, there was no tracking it. There was nobody knew about it. Nobody complained of random hair loss. Like, Hey, I'm smoothed in a baby's body. Yeah, it was all mentally ill, mentally uh, ill, terminally ill. All of them were in hospital wards of some kind. So, you know, probably sure. zero access to the citizens. Crazy, man. Then, of course, you have the World War II mustard gas experiments that a lot of people know about. Mustard gas was um, over 60,000 soldiers suspected of having been uh, subjected to mustard gas. Mustard gas. And, and this was just like right out of boot camp. Mm -hmm. These guys have gone out into battle yet. They're like, hey, good job. Why don't we uh, go run this test? That's and right. That's right. One of the most disgusting ones was the Wilbrook experiment, which was, I don't know if you're familiar with that one. No, I'm not, uh, no, I don't. Uh, Willowbrook experiments were um, trying to find a cure for hepatitis. So they injected hepatitis into orphans. It was a Willowbrook State School. And it was mentally handicapped kids. So they injected experimental drugs meant to cure hepatitis. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, you had no consent because these kids didn't have parents. So crazy. Anyway, so, yeah. And a lot, and a lot of this is out there. Proven fact. Anybody can look this up. Yeah. Exactly. Nobody, nobody bothers. That's when right. We have nobody bothers. Our fingertips. Yep. You know, and it, it's scary what we're capable of doing and how we're capable of covering it up. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's the thing. When, you know, we look at a censored world that we're in and we think that a lot of these things you wouldn't be able to find. You can Google this. Look up top 10 U.S. government experiments done on its own citizens. Bink, it'll pop right up. They're not censoring it because they're not afraid of you finding out. They don't give a fuck. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to exactly. do about it? So it doesn't matter if you know. That's how brazen they are about this shit. I mean, back in, the, in World War II times, I mean, it may have been different, I guess, and that's why they kept things so secret. But now it's like they just flaunt this shit because they know, like, what the fuck are you going to do about it? <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, again, going back to the idea, we kind of took a tangent there, but I think it's important. It's an important tangent to know what your government is capable of doing to you, has done to you, and continues to do to you, and then to think about, okay, now imagine if they didn't even have to touch you and they could control you. How easy, for sure, for sure. So this comes back to the idea of of control by hypnotism. Um, and so, 
you know, and obviously I, I mentioned the entertainment aspect, the different types of, uh, of hypnotists, but then you have these other techniques, right? That again, going back to the idea of what the CIA is using, how they're using these things. They're not doing this to make people laugh. They're not doing this to make people, you know, uh, act like a chicken, cluck around on a stage. They're doing this stuff to remove memories, implant false memories, uh, create trigger actions like trigger words, trigger uh, sounds, things like that, uh, that make the person do some kind of an action. So like a Manchurian candidate type situation, which uh, I don't know if are you what my wish list on Audible Manchurian candidate. Oh, I was just going to ask you: Are you familiar with it? I, you know, I have been doing plenty of uh, research this week, and they've heard a lot of stories about it but personally i have not read the book yeah. but it is now in my audible and it's something i'm going to be digging into it's great i mean obviously the manchurian candidate is a fictitious tale of a soldier i believe he is that uh is brainwashed into having a trigger in place that he hears something or sees something i can't remember exactly what it is where he's he's triggered to go and perform an assassination and then after that he has zero recollection of doing it perfect fall guy and so that's the type of things that they research mind control for is to be able to create these scapegoat situations you know as similar to the ufo thing i mean I think a lot of what we see is government technology, but we have the perfect scapegoat, aliens, because everybody wants to believe we're not alone. So do I. So the first thing we say is, well, it must be aliens. It's probably not. So this, you think, oh, my God, this guy came out of nowhere and killed somebody. Eh, Probably not. He was probably being controlled. Maybe there was a trigger in place. Maybe. But thinking about a sideshow stage hypnotist for entertainment, how easy it is. And a lot of people say, you know, I was one of these that believed it was staged, and then I saw one for myself, and I was like, holy fuck. So they, they, are, they, they are legitimate. They can do this. So it just makes you think how susceptible our brains are to influence. And that got me thinking... Well, how many thoughts are actually ours, our original thoughts that aren't based on some influence from something, media, which is a big one, of course. How many thoughts are subliminal implants, right? Subliminal messaging, whatever it is, whether it's social media, whether it's TV, whatever it might be. How many of these thoughts that we have are implanted based on what we see in here and, and things like that. The, repro- the reprogramming is real. I it mean, that's is real. Really what algorithms are all about. I mean, they even ran studies and it was proven on Facebook that they would just flood your feed with a bunch of negative feed on your wall and see how it would affect your personality and then flood it with positive stuff. See how that would change your personality. And it was, as, as they declared, a successful test. Absolutely. They know exactly what kind of a reaction they're going to get. That's why, I mean, that's the only reason targeted ads work. You know, otherwise, if it didn't work, they wouldn't keep doing it. But they work because they, they, it's not just about what you're saying, you know, because obviously we know they pick things up from what you see. Everybody's had that moment where you talk about a strap on and then it shows up on the Facebook ads. Like, what the fuck? They're advertising strap ons to me. What the hell? But I do need that. The dragon edition. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So we know that, but then also they're tugging at you emotionally. You know, emotionally. They're they're getting an emotional reaction out of you because that's where the real decision making happens. An emotional decision is very, very solid. You're, you know, it's one thing if it's an impulse buy, a lot of things can talk you out of an impulse buy. But if you're doing an emotional buy, very little is going to talk you out of that. 
And who doesn't have a screen in front of their face yes. at all anymore? Exactly. It's everywhere. Media is everywhere. It's everywhere. Yeah. And we know. be everywhere. Yes, and we know the mind is influenced by media. We know this, as you said, that Facebook does this. And and we, we know it has a, everybody knows, you know, good shit in, bad shit out, the whole idea, you got to feed your head. One of my favorite songs by uh, Jeff Snare playing. So, or I'm sorry, White Rabbit, they just end it with feed your head. But that's the idea, is that like a diet for your your belly, your tummy, just like your mind, what you feed your mind is going to uh, influence your mind. We know this. So we're influenced by media. So again, doesn't that mean that our thoughts are always influenced? So how many... This is plug in your local library. Go out there, get a book, and feed yourself something good. Especially the ones that they said that they're banning, they don't want you to read. Read yeah, those. To yeah. Kill a Mockingbird, shit like that. Yeah. Feed right. your thing. Behold a Peril Horse, great book. William Cooper. These are things that will open your eyes to the truth of this world that we, we live in. You know, and some of it, once again, some of the people that don't want to believe these things, the, 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 the ugly side of it, the dark side of it, you know, the, uh, the fuckery that has taken place. A lot of people don't want to believe it, but it's true and it exists and it happened, you know, and that's why it's important to go and look and, and, and again, to know what these people that are telling you, Oh, we're going to take care of you. We, you, we got you. This is what truth is. You should be wary of those words. You know, what, what's the uh, saying? The, uh, the scariest words in the English language are, I am from the government and I'm here to help you. Yeah, that scares me. <laughs> <laughs> so a guy named Dr. Jose Delgado, Yale University, 1950, was uh, one of the first people to really start theorizing about using technology, uh, specifically transistor and electrical technology, to manipulate and control electrical stimuli in the brain. And that is could control the brain itself and its responses. So in the mid-1950s, he invents this thing called the Stimoceiver, which is uh, a radio that was basically a combo, or it joined a stimulator of brain waves with a receiver that monitored EEG waves uh, and sent them back on separate radio channels that was directly in the patient's skull, so in the head of the of the patient. <laughs> so it's like crazy shit about you know, it's it's like a it's like a skull cap that reads your brain, right? It's monitoring these waves. And so whether he knew it or not, he had just created the blueprints and technology for controlling, remote controlling someone's mind and there's all this stuff you know into like uh his history of what he did and how he went about it acoustic kitty what's that the acoustic kitty the acoustic kitty what's the acoustic kitty okay so the acoustic kitty used that very machine and they had the implant because the uh, eeg readings they felt with the the way the cat's ears are more fine-tuned can filter out the extra sounds would give them a better reading. And so they had put this on a cat and they had tested it and it did become successful. It was a successful test, but it's a fucking cat. So it just, they released it out in the open and it just ran off. They were done. Like the cat's like, I'm out. <laughs> and so it was a successful test, but they ended up ending it after the testing because, well, the animal was a more independent, wouldn't cope wouldn't follow through with what they needed it to do. So the acoustic kitty, although successful, was abandoned because cats are cats and they don't give a shit. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> That's awesome. What a, you, you, you pick the most independent animal. Exactly. In the world. The, the animal that gives the least fucks what you want it to do. 
Uh, you pick that one animal to, to test that on. Hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> it just shows the true uh, reasoning of government, you know. Yeah. Whatever <laughs> it takes. Crazy. <laughs> So, you know, so again, so, so here you have, you've got, you've got experiments and results coming through. And then you've got this guy who's just now he's figured it out. He's figured out how to do this all out mind control, but his original intentions were that he wanted to help the mentally ill, right? The things like lobotomy were running rampant. It was all about these incredibly archaic, brutal solutions for mental, for mental health. As you had pointed out earlier, schizophrenia was running rampant. All this stuff is going crazy. There's a ton of mental health issues. And so he's trying, it, you know, in the beginning anyways, his, the way he had stated his intentions was that he wanted to pull away from things like lobotomy. He believed there was a way to control the brain externally without having to go in and scramble the brain to help these people out. So, so great intentions. Okay. But here's what happens. The world happens. Life happens. So you have great intentions. You control, you, you figure out mind control so you can help crazy people. But then you have competition. You have big pharma comes in. They start developing drugs for mental health, but instead of actually Con, you know, controlling the, the root cause, which is, as uh, Delgado pointed out, stimuli in the brain. Instead, Big Pharma comes in and creates these drugs that simply block these signals. They don't actually control the root of the issue, and all you got to do is take a pill. So it makes it super easy, right? So now all of a sudden there's no need for Delgado's special stimulization or stimulation research. No more of that. You don't need that. So he changes it up because he wants to be stay relevant. He wants to use this technology. He wants to use this research. So he changes the direction towards the need to control violent prisoners, saying that now he can remote control through implants of the brain, control violence. And he did actually, he proved it. He proved, uh, he did this experiment where he went into an arena when the, where there was uh, where they implanted this uh, device into a, a bull, a big bull, and allowed this bull to charge him, and he had this remote control and the push of a button, the the bull stopped dead in his tracks. Jesus. Yeah. What and when the bull's turn, you can't like that's an automatic <laughs> shut down. Like how do you click? You're done. Yeah. Wow. Crazy. So. It is amazing, but here's what it shows. Oh, and from this, from this, he went full on, I would say, villain. <laughs> because he just, he was all all in for mind control. All in. It, it wasn't, you know, it started with prisoners, but then it just grew and grew and grew. You know, he sold out to government, all this stuff. So the noble cause changed. And, and this is what it goes to show that you can have the most noble intentions. This is why people that say, oh, the scientific community, they're not, they're not you know, in it for, for uh, they don't have ulterior motives. They're just, you know, scientists that want to explore. But then you have money that comes in. Then you have the need to continue funding. And they're not going to fund something unless they need it. And if they don't need it anymore... Well, then they don't need you anymore. So how, as this case, how do you stay relevant? You switch it up to follow where the money's going to go. Of course, isn't it? Yeah. So, so here you have noble intentions, but then the temptation by the power for, my, for more control, literally control. <laughs> you know, it's too much. It's too much. And so, and so that's why the, it's incentivized to to follow the money and and that's where you have of these noble intentions don't get thought about for very long because the money doesn't follow that there's no incentives for that but uh following then this train of subliminal messaging 
A lot of people know about subliminal uh, the subliminal messaging in movies. Um, a great example of this is Fight Club, where um, Tyler Durden puts uh, the picture of a cock <laughs> in the middle of Disney movie with this orgasm sound and just like a really quick blurp, and people don't even know what they're seeing, but they're seeing it. And um, that's a, a, a great example. You can see it in action. But the difference is, is that instead of the, the you know, marketing companies and the government using pictures of cocks and pornos, instead they're doing, they're doing marketing tactics. You know, they're putting, they're trying to get you to buy fast food. They're trying to get you to, you know, believe in the, whatever the fuck they want you to believe in. But we know that they were actually doing this for a while. And the way they called it is they, they described it as some public lighthearted mind control in the late 50s and 60s to unaware audiences. In fact, most famously, it's known to be done by uh, Coca-Cola, the Coke brothers. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Even in my 50s and 60s, TV was relatively pretty new. Yeah. Like, this was the birth of, of entertainment. Yep. Everybody, if you could afford a TV, you had one. <laughs> well, there was no data to show any side effects or harm, nothing. So you didn't have, I mean, even people that worked on early stage computer type screens, what did they have? What did they have? It wasn't invasive. It was such a minute amount of time spent on them. There was no no data to show side effects or or anything like that, but... As you said, it's right. Everybody had a TV screen, just like back before that. Everybody had a radio. Yep. Everybody had a radio. Um, We're always in for the next best thing, that's bigger, right. better deal. That's right. That's right. Look out for the new phone. Yes, exactly. But that's but as you said, they took advantage of that. You know, they knew how powerful audio control could be that, you know, manipulating words, repetitive, you know, simply that in audio form. Now imagine what you could do with audio mixed with visual. Exactly. Un it's a, uh, it's an, it's impossible for people to, to, to be able to, uh, to say no to that type of temptation. It's too hard, especially people already in control that, that want more control. And of course, it's ridiculous to think that they only used it to sell shit. Is it that that's the way that they say, oh, we only were doing it for advertising. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. And right. I, yeah, and I, and I, I absolutely believe it's equally insane to think that they're not still doing it. Oh, well, hell no. There's too much prosperity in it. Like, there's too much prospect into it. That's so. right. That's right. There's too much, like, there's too much advancement. And, I mean, let's face it. If you look at history. And throughout history, I mean, we, it has always been bathed with war and evolution of government and the fall of empires. And it's a repetitive thing. That's right. And why would we stop now after thousands of years of doing the same shit? Especially now that you have the technology to do it easier than ever imagined exactly i mean imagine what the pharaohs in days of old would have done mm. would have given for a mind control implant what in the actual fuck can you imagine a pharaoh going uh no i'll just use whips yeah we like whips better than you uh Reminding Mark. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, no way. No way. They would have given their left nut to have had something like that. Any government would look at the Roman Empire. That's right. Roman Empire. They could have just easily have had the technology that we have now. They, would have, they actually would have succeeded in conquering the globe. Imagine a kingdom. And we know there were kingdoms that were... were you know, the royal family, the, the kings starved their peasants. Now imagine living in a world where you have social media, where you can just make people happy that they're starving to death. Yep. You know, that's what the original Gladiator Games was for. The, the Roman people 
the the peasants anyways the royal people any if you were elite rich of any kind you were golden but if you didn't have money in the roman empire you were cannon fodder you were killed at any moment you had no food you had no rights nothing and so they put these games on because it was getting so bad that they were in fear that there was going to be an uprising and so they exactly. had to do something and so they implemented these games distraction tactics as you said it's been going on forever where do you think they got the gladiators from that's right the people slaves that's right Weird coincidence, maybe. <laughs> That's right. Again, coincidence? I think not. So you have the Oklahoma bomber, Timothy McVeigh, going back to this whole mind control implant idea. Um, he actually claimed that he was microchipped while in the military. And that's why he did this. Supposedly. Will we ever know? Probably not. Of course not. But, of course not. Come on. No, but it's possible, knowing what we know of that the technology exists, absolutely, since the early 1950s. We know for a fact they can do this. So it's it's at least possible that they did this to, I mean, think about what the, the term terrorist has done for the government. And, you know, and it has become such a blanket term. Oh yeah. Like racist. Very, very similar. Yeah. It's, 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 uh, it's very interesting to say the least how, you know, they use terminology to attack people and, and you know, yeah, this labeling people as terrorists. And I'm not saying there aren't terrorists. There are, there are people that deliver terror, making them terrorists, but there are also people who are controlled, who there's very, very significant evidence that there was something else there something that was behind the scenes controlling them or influencing them in some way. There's a fun um, aspect to this in music, with music. Um, the whole idea of backmasking, are you familiar with that term, backmasking? I'm not actually, no. So backmasking is the idea, uh, it's basically just subliminal messages behind music. Right. Oh. And so we have this that was like the whole theory, you know, Charles Manson, that he had heard subliminal messages in the Beatles music. That's where Helter Skelter, the whole that whole thing came from, that he heard a, a satanic message in Helter Skelter, the song, and that's where he got all that. Um, but there's actually a lot of this. There's a lot of this. There's actually uh, supposedly Motorhead, the song Nightmare. There's a lot of people that believe there's a uh, there's a laugh at the end, or something. Or I'm sorry, no, that there's some kind of message at the end. Um, I can't remember exactly what it is. Oh yeah, so it's uh, so there's an angry growl in this uh, towards the end of the song, I guess. But if you Play it in reverse. It says, now tell me about your miserable little lives. I do not subscribe to your superstitious, narrow-minded flights of paranoia. I and people like me will always prevail. You will never stifle our free speech in any country in the world because we will fight forever. That, that sounds like a long message to be in a growl. But then, of course, you have like Slayer song Slayer, Hell Awaits, which they were pretty open about their messaging. I don't think they needed to have any secret messages in their music. But, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of these. A whole bunch of these. The Beatles, of course. A um, um, lot of heavy metal stuff. Judas Priest. The Eagles even. Hotel California, supposedly. So, yeah, weird shit. Uh, Led Zeppelin. Anyways, whole bunch. 
But yeah, very, very weird. Very weird. Uh, so then now you think about frequency waves, low frequency waves, LFW is as they're known. Um, all the devices we have around us that put out frequency waves from your phone to, uh, I mean, really the big one is your phone, but obviously computers do, um, a ton of devices put out frequency waves and now knowing what they can do with subliminal audio messaging, what's to stop any amount of low frequency waves getting mixed in with what we're listening to. I mean, they could, they could do it very, very easily. And it's everywhere. Like I said, everybody's got a screen in their face, Facebook, YouTube, your streaming services, commercials everywhere, everywhere. So on top of visual, on top of audio, we have the mix in of these other waves that we can barely even comprehend, you know, in, in, know that they're there, but they're there. So there's actually a journalist named Susan Bryce, who in the 1993, she exposed experiments done in an article. She exposed experiments that were done in public theaters with random audiences using sound waves. And she said they were timed to the rhythm of the human heartbeat of 72 beats per minute, or in this case, in the in the sounds, it was pulses per minute, testing, controlling human behavior. Crazy. So in theaters. That's yeah. amazing. I'm a huge mummy buff, uh, a movie buff. And, God, 1993... Mm-hmm. Jurassic Park might have messed me up more than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows, man? Who knows? I mean, really, to think that, like, to think that they were, I, it just goes to show, like, there's no limit. There's no limit. And again, as much as people might not want to believe it, that these things are happening, they're happening. And and also, we are incredibly vulnerable to these things. We are incredibly vulnerable to manipulation of the mind every day. Every day. All it is is repetition. Again, it's uh, you can program your mind to remember words, to remember phrases, to remember numbers by simple repetitive, uh, by repetition. Now imagine if you hear the same propaganda all the time, the same narratives all the time, the same quote-unquote truth all the time. It's programming. It truly is up to us as the individual to educate ourselves and to furthering what we understand what's going on, not only in our own country with our own governments, but to understand how far that reaches to other countries, how far as our involvement and or uninvolvement is in other situations. I'm the one. I'm not. I'm never going to get into politics. It's not about politics. I'm yeah. just saying, get to know what's going on in the world. That's right. And don't just rely on a one source feed. That's right. And politics are a sideshow. Politics are a sideshow. It's it's just exactly. absolutely. If you if you if you, it it is, and again, like you said. Fuck politics. Fuck the government. That's what it's really about. Fuck the government. Doesn't matter who's at the fucking helm. Doesn't matter. This it the yeah, it's bad. Um Yeah, it's terrible. So so you know, now you know again, thinking about these these little devices that have been around since the fifties that could be easily implanted, not to mention just simple influence of words, messages that can manipulate the mind. Now, behind this, behind this, put agencies with unlimited budgets, the ability to completely classify information, 
with advanced technologies to go behind it all, it, it's hard to imagine what they can't do. You know what I mean? I mean, it's it's so hard to think like, even myself, I think about myself. I What I would do with a small amount of technology and a large amount of money, I don't know. <laughs> I You know, I'm kind of imaginative, imaginative and I'm not, I am can be a douchebag. So I wonder like, you know, Jesus, you've got people who are career assholes that are given unlimited budgets and all this information. And, and we expect them to do the noble thing. Jesus fucking Christ. It's, it, you know, it's a no brainer. We're, yeah, we're fucked. <laughs> it's a corruption thing. You know I mean, you have unlimited power, yeah. unlimited fuck, unlimited technology at your fingertips to research, back it up. At what point will it not corrupt? With virtually zero checks and balances. Virtually zero amount of people that are going to come in. Like, when's the last time they audited any of these agencies? To figure out money, where it's going, and any at least of which, where the information is. We know nothing about them. We know nothing about them. But luckily through, at least we have the FOIA requests, but that really is for them, not us. But thankfully, we have this small benefit of being able to ask them pretty please, can I have information on stuff being FOIA requests. But um, in 2018, there is a conspiracy website named Muckrock, and I use conspiracy. I, I should be using like, uh, like you had said, tinfoil hat uh, militia. But this site, Muckrock, who specializes in FOIA requests, putting them up, finding them. They were digging into Antifa and they found, or the, I'm sorry, they received a zip file at random called EM effects on the human body. And in this, there were three documents that broke down the effects of these, what's called psychoelectric weapons, as well as ways that they're projecting this energy using communication vans and black helicopters, which we've talked about black helicopter before, completely stealthy, silent helicopters, 100%. Um, and they um, carry these psychotronic weapons is what they're considered as completely covertly under the radar that control remote control individual minds. And then on top of that, you have phone communication towers that send out mass mind control signals. So this is what this article was breaking down. And supposedly they got this from the same place they're getting FOIA requests. Um, so then the effects of these weapons included on top of mind control was reading and broadcasting thoughts controlled dreaming, hearing voices and commands inside a person's head, and forced waking visions. Forced waking visions. Isn't that hallucinations? Isn't that what that would be considered? Forced waking vision would be a hallucination? Yeah. I, I could only imagine. I mean, like those that have like that sleep paralysis. Yeah. Sponsored by Nike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. Oh, my God. Yeah. And, of course, more of these physical effects were more like um, physical sickness types like uh, racing heart, tinnitus, um, itching, constant itching, and general pain in joints and muscles. How many people have all that shit? I mean, shit, racing heart, that could be anxiety. Tinnitus, that's ringing to the ears. Itching, well, a lot of people are on uh, pharmaceuticals that make you itch. And then general pain in joints and muscles, that's an inflammation. You know, I'm almost 40, and I got to tell you, the joints and pain thing is a real damn thing. Yeah, well, now we it could be the psychotronic weapons. <laughs> General joint oh. and pain muscle muscle pain can be uh, psychotronic weapons, dude, so. 
Well, that's exciting. Glad I <laughs> exactly. Glad that's I exciting. Experiments. If you're listening, CIA, thank you for listening. Oh, they're always Please listening. Subscribe. They're always listening. Oh yeah, they're great. So then on top of that, in 1992, you have an Australian magazine called Nexus that did an article about this guy, John St. Clair Akui. And this guy actually put together a lawsuit against the NSA claiming that the agency has the ability to covertly murder U.S. citizens and conduct psychological control operations to cause certain individuals to be diagnosed as insane, as well as having blanket coverage of electronic communications in the U.S. and the world in the name of national security. Does that not sound familiar or what? So here you have this guy with a lawsuit claiming that they do all these things, and we basically know they do all these things now. And this was in 92. But that also on top of this that he mentioned, which we know, of course, that they going back to the 1940s, we just lined a lot of that up with some of the most advanced computers in the world at the time. You're talking about the 90s. And this was operating out of Fort Meade, which is, by the way, the largest NSA facility said to be around 100,000 square feet. That's full of 50,000 individual agents, all of which have advanced permission to spy on anyone. Of course, they have to deem them of interest. But what does that mean? How, how, okay. how, how much does that take? That list of people of interest, it, I mean, let's face it, just us being on this show <laughs> makes us people of fucking interest. Yeah, that's right. Like everybody is subject. That's right. Well, and think about think about what they just did with reclassifying the term terrorist. Have you heard about this? No, but I can't wait. So they have reclassified. And look, you can go look this up. You can look up how they have reclassified the term terrorist. Terrorist is, of course, to encompass all the things it already has, right? violence and all that threats against uh, da, 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 da. but now it's anyone who is using anti-government rhetoric that's us okay oh no patriotism 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 Dude, is terrorism they list patriotism and tell me we haven't come stepped away from our congressional rights you Telling know first amendment crazy now, that also included people that were, um, they, they were doing this to parents at, at one point that were getting, now, ag aggressive in um, parent-teacher meetings and all that, school board meetings, but still, like now, it takes virtually nothing to be classified as a terrorist, let alone a person of interest. Crazy. So, and the guy that blew the lid on the NSA... Mm -hmm. He ended up uh, running to Russia, didn't he? Uh, yes, he did, yeah. yeah, yeah whatever happened to him since? What's that? Like, whatever happened to him since? Like, I mean, in all honesty, guys, we all kind of owe this guy a great attitude. He blew the horn on something pretty fucking big. Pretty fucking big. And virtually pretty nobody knows about it. Big. Yeah. And nobody bad denied this guy is egg. He's uh, He left. He fled uh, U.S. soil. Yep. Whatever happened with that guy? I mean, as far as I know. Uh, Did he have a heart attack? What's that? Did he have a heart attack? I would not surprise me. <laughs> I, I honestly, I don't know exactly what happened to him. I mean, unfortunately, that's what happens to a lot of these people is that, you know, these things just kind of go away along with the people. Um, from what I understand, he ended up after that because he didn't win. Um, he ended up, like, going off and, and didn't want to talk about it, didn't want to deal with it. Um, 
he claimed that he was, I believe he claimed that he was having these things done to him as far as them experimenting with him. Um, you know, using these tactics on him to imp- try and implant. Even with the MK Ultra back in the early 50s when this all started sprouting, mm-hmm. they were not even telling fellow CIA agents that were with them that they were in- drugging them with LSD. That's you right. never knew. Like, you go up and get a cup of coffee in the morning because you're starting your shift, and all of a sudden you're tripping balls like, hey, you got the day off pay. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I mean, think about that. That's what they did to the one guy. They spiked his LSD and and jumped himself out of a window. Amazing. Amazing. You know, like, the guy just swan dive at a sprint. That's right. He was determined. Yeah. Like, yeah. Break your neck twice, guards got bored, left, and gave him a rope, said, finish it yourself. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, it's crazy, man. I mean, it really is to, to think about what they can do. I mean, and then the MK Ultra experiments, they found ways of administering these things through aerosol. So they don't even have to spike your drink, dude. They, they just, just pump it into your they air. They just pump it into the air. And then on top of that, now you have an even a step back even further. You have these completely non-invasive, low frequency signals. You have these devices that can broadcast thoughts that, you know, all these things. So, so you don't even have to be in the same room with them. Basically you've got things like, um, you know, he was claiming this, this guy was claiming that they, they had the ability to decode electromagnetic frequencies, EMF waves, uh, projecting electric currents from what's called the magnetic flux that surrounds people. So we all put off a magnetic field of some kind. We, you know, that's how we connect with the earth and that they're able to manipulate that. Uh, that's molecular. No. Yeah, it's I'm insane. not okay with that. No. No, no there's I don't zero trust way. That at all. <laughs> no, there's zero way to fight against this. You know, and then also according to him, they take it a step further. They do a technique called remote neural monitoring that gives them the ability to send encoded signals to the auditory cortex of your brain, allowing direct audio communication to the brain. In other words, you would just hear voices, invisible voices in your head like your own thoughts. You know, it's about time I had some company, you know. God damn, it's getting lonely up there. <laughs> yeah, but the last thing you want in company is some agent named Greg, you know, right. who's, uh, <laughs> you know, a real douchebag. Right. Got, oh, got, got you going around people. punching babies. Jesus. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, it's scary. Yeah. It's scary what we're fully capable of. I mean, like you, uh, most anything that you can see released now, they are beyond that. Oh, yeah. There's a reason why they're okay with releasing these docs. Like, yeah, whatever. That that was eons ago. Fuck That's it. right. Here you go. That's right. Here's a break from we're way past that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're way past that. Yeah. Think about, think about, Movies like The Gamer. You seen that one? Oh, yeah. That was a fun one. Great movie. So for those that haven't seen it, I'm not going to spoil anything, and fuck you if I do. But the deal is is that they have they implant, similar to this, they put an implant in prisoners' minds that allow direct control of an outside person. So a person through holographic technology is able to step into this room that has, uh, you're able to control and then you control the individual Um, again, through a small implant. Um, There's a show agents of shield. You've seen that the Marvel show. Yep. There's a character, a villain. Uh, He's not really a villain. He's actually taken, he's taken advantage of. He's a cyborg guy and they use this technology again, an implant that allows them to see through his eyes. And so this, in this way, the same technology they have, according to this Acuity guy, this RNM technology, this uh, 
what's the what's the term for it again? I can't remember. Oh, remote neural monitoring is able to map out the electrical signals from your visual cortex of the brain, transferring the images to a computer or a device of some kind, allowing this agent or operative to see what you're seeing. Remote viewing through your own eyes. There's so they're they can literally do this technology. That sounds super fun. Yeah, yeah, super fun for them. <laughs> super fun for them. Wonderful. Yeah. So then he says that the NSA has nanotechnology computers that are 15 years ahead of what the public knows. Now, to me, that's hilarious. That's hilarious because that's an understatement. A complete understatement. I'm going to, my guess is we're at least 50 years ahead, or they are at least 50 years ahead of what they're allowing the public to have. And it's a trickle down system. Yes. I mean, they, they're, like I said, government does nothing fast. Nothing. Except they will trickle down just little tidbits. Yeah. Well, that's what they give to us. They don't do anything fast for the general public. What they do is fast is research and development. Oh, hell yeah. And so, because there's a lot of money being poured into this. I mean, look, you have, what, 2013, I think, you had the first audit that tried to be done on the U.S. government, and they found that $2.5 trillion Dollars was unaccounted for. Two point five trillion. That's with a T. Trillion. Damn it, Benny! I told you to take care of the account. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the only time it's ever been done. And they never came up with a reason why. They literally their explanation was it's just gone. That's what they said. That was their public statement. Two point five trillion dollars <laughs> gone. Now you tell that to them. Yeah. When you file no your new shit. Exactly. Oh, my money's just That's gone. You'll be in jail faster than you. you yeah. Send yeah. an email to the government saying, hey, I'm keeping my money and you'll see them. Taxation is extortion. Oh, it's theft. Flat out theft. Straight. Straight. And again, to me, the scariest thought about all this isn't that it exists. It's not that mind control exists. It's not that the technology exists. I think it's fascinating. And if humanity had access to this in the right ways, it would change the world. Humanity, imagine the ability to communicate with each other when you can send your thoughts to each other. So there's zero, things wouldn't be taken out of context anymore. There would be no, because your intentions would be broadcast with your thoughts. So Humanity is at a pinnacle where we could totally turn and make a, huge, a species change. Yeah, that's right. In the evolution of humanity. That's right. But there's no money in it. That's right. You wouldn't need those things if you could communicate because there would be no ability to lie. There would be no ability to... I mean, I'm sure there would be ways to mod your brain to be able to, you know, filter out lies, whatever the fuck. But it would uh, then there would be countermeasures of ways to be able to dictate that, like there are now with deep fakes and things like that. We have technology that can literally make your face look like somebody else's face, and we have ways of counteracting that now. So these things are going to pop up, but if they're secret, we have no ways of. Uh, there's no no ways to implement. Uh, uh, technology to guard your brain against this because the government won't release it to the public. A strong country is an informed country. That's right. And so again, right. it's, it's not that these things exist that terrify me. It is the fact that the only people that have access to it are the cocks, the assholes, the absolute worst of the worst of humanity. Them bitches. Oh, these motherfuckers. I hate them all. I hate them all. Cocksucker. Eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's complete control doesn't come from having these technologies or the techniques. It comes from controlling the information on how to use it. 
So the fact that we don't know how it's used, we don't know what it, what does it or how how it's implemented the technologies that actually exist. We have these this bread, you know, trail of breadcrumbs. But we don't actually have solid evidence of these things. So it was burned. It was destroyed. Like I said, this is right. deathbed confession era. That's right. So that's the only way we're going to find out. That's right. And that is what a complete control looks like is not only to have these things, but to control who gets them. That is complete control. Mind, body, and soul, they have access to it all. And this idea that, oh, well, you know, by putting a VPN on my phone, they're not able to track me. (laughs) Don't make me laugh, you fucking retards. Come on. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Protect your data with a VPN. Hilarious. Pay extra money, it helps. My God. <laughs> oh, so I can search Google in New, you know, in Zimbabwe so they don't can't filter out my search. Fucking make me laugh. Jesus Christ. If it, it, it these things, you know, this idea that, you know, like I was talking to a buddy of mine, you know, that was that was saying, uh, you know, this this phone thing. Uh, there's a show called Terminal List. Great show. Check it out. Amazon Prime. Fantastic. Where you takes the phone, takes the SIM card out, throws it in a, fo- a foil bag, and then it's like, now they can't track you. Mm. Right. I, don't, I don't believe that. Your Your phone is the only thing in this world that exists that is tracking you? No way, man. No way. You would have to literally be out on an iceberg somewhere with zero electronics anywhere around you to even think. But even then, they've got a satellite staring at you as you jerk it on your iceberg. There is cameras at the intersection. (laughs) There are cameras everywhere. Everybody has a phone. Every there are it's everywhere. That's right. There's no way. And that's domestically. We don't even know what's in orbit. We don't even know. We have no idea. We have this gay-ass number that comes out that they tell us, oh, 4,000, whatever, surrounding the orbit. We have no idea. We have no clue what's actually out there for surveillance. We have no idea. We only know what they tell us, and that's the truth. And they already took NASA away from us. That's right. That's right. NASA was our reach, you know. That was the final frontier. I mean, you know. I am a Star Trek buff and I love my, I love it. I love the idea of what could be out there, but we'll never know because it's not meant for us. Well, it, it'll be never known until, until we get the right exactly. people that get, that go into these agencies, these three letter agencies and start kicking ass and taking names. Oh, I'm sorry, Brenda. I don't have access to that FOIA request. Fuck you, pal. Get out of here. Mine now. Just cunt punch, you're out. You know, and and just start doing just everybody that stands in your way to the truth. The fact that, you know, um, um, what was the president? Jimmy Carter walked into Bush Sr. when he was the director of the CIA and asked for all the 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 uh, data on, on UFOs and was told, no, he should have punched him in the dick and got it anyways. That's what we need. We do capital we punishment. Actually represent, I, look, actually represent the people. That's right. Look, capital punishment needs to exist for anyone in power. Anyone in power, you fuck with the citizens. If you're a traitorous prick, off with your head. We have guidelines and rules that were established. That's right. So, you know, now you have the NSA, which, again, also in the same case, this same lawsuit, big, you guys should look at this. Um, He says the NSA had access to the tap water. What do you think tap water is? It's a gay bomb, baby. And air ducts in people's homes for the delivery of drugs. How's Flint doing these days? Yeah, no shit. My God. How long has that been going on? 200 years? Jesus. What the fuck, man? So, and, and, and you know, a lot of, I mean, most people know about fluoride. 
It's in everybody's water. Everybody's. So, and you know, it's, it's, and there's some crazy shit on that fluoride with, with water about how, you know, breaking your blood brain barrier or whatever the fuck and making it difficult for other things to get through into your body for, to, for you to be healthy. I'm probably, I'm sure I'm getting it wrong, but it's just crazy, man. So again, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. That's what it really comes down to. And despite all of this, despite all of this brought forward by this guy, no charges, no investigations into any of the individual agents or the NSA itself. And as we were saying earlier, he just refuses a, a QE kind of went into obscurity, refuses to speak about it. But for a long time said, not only did he know about the existence of these things, he was a victim of these things. Now, going back to the previous problem I posed, the hard part for me is how do you prove it? How do you prove these things exist? You have plenty of people coming forward about MK Ultra experiments. You have a few declassified memos, uh, documents. Monarch is a branch. What's that? Monarch is a branch. Operation yes. Monarch. That's right. That's right. They, in fact, in that one, there's a lot of uh, a lot of. Famous celebrities. Yeah, a lot of celebrities and a lot of people that believe that uh, that. Um, wait, did you say Montauk? Monarch. Monarch. Like yes. Movie. You're right. Yeah, I, for some reason I thought Montauk. But yes, you're right, Monarch. Yeah, exactly. My voice doesn't come through that well. No, 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 you're right. <laughs> and, it, they're, and they're very similar words, too. I mean, it just sounds... But, uh, yeah. but yeah, exactly. And what's interesting is, you know, since I mentioned Montauk, you guys should look into that, too, because that's there's, there's theories that they were experimenting with not only mind control remote viewing and time travel. And so that's a big one. And there's a ton of these that were experimenting with mind, mind control, a ton of them. They may have been doing other things on top of it, but they were absolutely experimenting with mind control. But again, how do we prove it aside from the small paper trail that we have? You know, you have, yeah. as you said, they were purging records into the seventies to do with this stuff. Yes. And it's all about your research, keeping an open mind. That's right. It is good to have a good government. Mm -hmm. If we have, but we fucking don't. Yeah. But know what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to have people in control that know what they're doing, that have the actual interest of the American people in mind. The people by the people. That's right. Well, and, and look, I mean, here's what you have. You have the CIA proven track record of destroying records to do with what their, their shenanigans, excuse me, and covering up their tracks. Now we live in a digital age with no paper trail. Everything's digital. Everything's encrypted. But you have hackers that are getting through, like we have mentioned, Julian Assange, and you have these declassified documents that are being leaked. Now, here's what you have coming that I think is going to change these things, okay? Now, we think we're headed towards a enlightened age of, you know, disclosure and, you know, more truth than ever because all of a sudden it, there's all this truthiness coming out when I think it's, it's really they want you to know these things because they're about ready to do something where if they did it without you knowing these things, you'd blow your head off. But if they do these things, if they show these things, you're going to still just keep deep throating burritos and going about your life. So, exactly. So here's what you have. You have now, with not only a digital age removing a paper trail, that now you have things encrypted, but now you have hackers getting through. But now you have quantum computing coming through. The quantum apocalypse, potentially the end of encryption as we know it. Meaning, no more secrets, right? Except that who's doing all the research and development into quantum technology? It's government. It's defense contractors. Everyone is, is funded by government that is doing anything in this. Now, it might be a private company, but where are they getting their funding from? Government. 
So what happens? As soon as they get far enough, like they've done in the past, they snag it. As soon as the, the, the public sphere starts to get big enough into the technology, the developments go far enough, boom, they snag it up. Yep, every time. Every time. So now, what happens when they have this technology that is able to end encryption, meaning they control the key to all encryption? It means they control all the information. And who's going to know how to break through it? Me and you, we're not going to know quantum technology, nor are we going to have access to it. So they will, again, they will have the, the, the single greatest key to information ever in the history of mankind. There's a lot a that lot. they have a knowledge of. I mean, and I'm sorry, I'm going to get off topic for a second, but I'll hold your thought. Uh, the Smithsonian has actually reported that they have destroyed evidence, fossil evidence, that giants, real motherfucking giants, old Hercules and Xena show shit, you know, existed. They actually existed. We destroyed evidence. We have also found out that our species is a lot older on this planet than we have known before. Potentially a million years older. Exactly. Who knows? What we don't know. History is taught by the victor. And while everything we know is what we've learned. By who? A great line by Tommy Lee Jones in Men in Black was, you know, <clears throat> 200 years ago. <clears throat> well, more than that. We knew the earth was flat. Some people still do think that. Um you know, <coughs> before that, <coughs> pardon You're me. You're saying it's like a donut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a great line. Tommy Lee Jones is saying, you know, we used to think the earth was flat. We used to, uh, you know, yesterday you used to think you were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. And that is so perfect. I remember seeing that in theaters, and that one line is just, holy fuck. Yeah. You know, it's so like true. I mean, look, humanity is so certain of what they know when they know it. But when they don't know it, they are so resistant to new knowledge that we love to ignore it and and once again gatekeep it. I mean, man, it's the worst thing ever. And I think the best step for anything and any species, as as far as society goes, as far as humans go, is that to acknowledge that we're fucking human, which means we're prone to evil. That's right. Everyone. To address that shit and call it out. Call it out. That's right. Research it. Learn your shit. You can't go through life being ignorant, thinking that you're wrapped up in this beautiful American comforter flag that's just always going to protect you, keep you safe. That flag is draining your soul. Well, and that's what they do. It's been pr it's been shown. Look, we have a great example in history of nationalism and patriotism being turned as a weapon against citizens to make them believe that something atrocious was the right thing to do. We used to reach for the stars. We were imaginative. We were creative. We used to be America. God bless it. This is a beautiful fucking country. Yeah. But our corruption and our greed and our, and we have turned it complete opposite of what it was intended to be. Yeah. And, but, you know, I, I hate to say it, but, you know, it's not going the way that this was supposed to go. No. And nobody can stand up because, well, to stand up means you're not American. Yeah, exactly. Well, the, the hard part is this, you know, I, the, P, the questions, when people say, you know, when I start talking about MKUltra, when I start talking about these things that the government has done in the past, and I say, you know, they've done this, they've done this, and then you bring up something modern, and they say, but why would they do that? Why would, why would they do that? Why would a government want to control their citizens? 
why would why would they not why would they not want to control their citizens? Think about this. Would you not want to be able to command your dog with a microchip in his brain that you could just say stay and he fucking stayed? Would that would you not want to do that? Now think about what they think of you. We're nothing You're, but we're nothing but yeah. cattle with thumbs to these people. Yeah. We don't make shit. We just turn the gears. That's right. So absolutely. So then going back to the idea of, of microchips and, and these external ways of controlling people, false flags are invaluable to government. Invaluable. Because it completely diverts attention from them as uh, the idea of a scapegoat. Anyone and everyone with this type of technology can be a scapegoat. Anyone, anyone, anytime. And and bombings, assassinations, mass shootings. You know it. You you name any of these things, all of it, all on top of this, on top of it being terrible, are also going to sway public opinion that leads to regulations that disarm a population. 100%. Now pull back and remember, pull back one, one frame and remember there's a gigantic propaganda machine at work behind all this, behind the mind manipulation of individuals. You have a propaganda machine at work with mainstream media getting all their news from the government. PSAs, they're all, they're just, they're just, uh, um, uh, what what's the the term I'm trying to remember? Um, damn it, I'm trying to remember what it's called. But anyways, it's basically just uh um. Why can't I remember the term? You know, I even trying to look it up, and I can't even fucking think of it myself. I apologize. No, no, it's my fault. It's uh, it's I mean, Jesus, I I fucking worked in radio. We used to get these all the time. It's not a PSA. It's a uh. Oh, God damn it. Anyways, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm talking about. But <coughs> <laughs> but that's what you have, is you have them all getting it from this. Um, so, even, so even if they're not directly controlling people, even if they're not implanting minds, even if they're not beaming down a ray of a thought or a mind indirectly into your brain using satellites and all this, they don't it's need that. They're controlling culture and information. So they it's don't, a cool, they don't a subtle coercion. That's right. And they don't even need the fancy tech because we got social media. You guys keep it up on the latest hype? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Y'all watching American Idol lately. America's got talent. I mean, come on. This is all propaganda hype shit that they're feeding you. That's right. You're absorbing, and like I said, get to your library. Yeah. So, you know, that's, it's just, and look, I mean, there's, there's a bunch of examples of mind control. I mean, it's, not, again, not proven, but it is <coughs> suspicious to say the least. You got Robert Kennedy, supposed to become president, 68, assassinated, Sirhan Sirhan, and he, he claimed, uh, he confessed the whole thing. They found a ton of evidence. And then he claimed afterwards, his defense was saying he was mentally ill. But afterwards, he claimed he didn't even remember the trial. Says he was programmed. Coincidence? <laughs> That's right. Coincidence? I think not. And uh, then, of course, you have the, I don't know, have, have you heard of this, uh, what is it, Polybius arcade game? No, but I can't wait to hear it. It's an urban legend. Um, so here, here's the urban legend is, and this is according to Wikipedia, so take this uh, for what you will. But according to this, Polybius is an urban legend about a 1981 arcade game that really nobody knows if it truly existed or not because they don't, they're, they're not around anymore. But there's a lot of people that claim that they they saw it being played, things like that. Anyways, legend goes that it was a crowd, a, a, a government 
psychological experiment in Portland. And it was put around to all these uh, arcade shops, this one game. Supposedly, wow. yeah, supposedly, it, in, it produced intense psychoactive and addictive effects in players. And that apparently there was the, these, the idea that there were men in black that showed up, um, that were like data mining the machines and watching people that had effects. Um, supposedly there were, um, uh, what was it? It was, yeah, they were watching the different side effects from the gamers um, who apparently the side effects were they got really sick. They had bad nightmares and a lot of them got insomnia. Jesus. Yeah. And, you know, and given the time frame, and I don't know how many of old of our audiences here today, but, you know, I remember our kids yeah. back in the day, and those were all about patterns. Yes. It was all about repeating patterns. Once you mastered the patterns, you mastered the fucking game. You got all kinds of cool prizes. You know, right. we're old. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So it would only <laughs> make sense to include this game. Yeah. It includes patterns that induce a symptom. And back in the 80s, arcades were huge. Huge, dude. What a great way to sneak some shit in. Yeah. On the civilians. That's right. Once again. Well, and again, going back to how they do, they capitalize on popular media, radio, TV, arcade games, social media. You know, I mean, it, it really just. You musicians have zero talent, but they're so goddamn famous. Yeah, <laughs> yep. that's right. So it, it really is. It's, it's fascinating how they, they do. They watch these trends and they capitalize on it. Now, again, there's no. Um, direct evidence that these machines actually existed. But there are people that have come forward to say that they played it, they had these effects, they were being watched by some kind of government entities that they say are men in black. But that's right. But it only lasted about a month. Nobody's seen them since. Now, here's the thing. I wouldn't put it past any of these at least 18 intelligence agencies to infiltrate the gaming community because they infiltrated the hippie community. They infiltrated, they've infiltrated um, uh, religious groups in order to influence people. There is no limit to what we cannot get our fingers into. That's right. And then also now think about this. Think about where a lot of these gaming community, uh, these gamers were in the 80s, right? 81. You've got nine, 10 year olds, okay, playing it. Yeah. Now th think about where those people are now. They're in the industry, coders, programmers, software engineers. So now they're making. So what better way to influence an entire industry for generations than to infiltrate the infancy of it? And get a hold of the people that are going to be the heads of this industry later on. Exactly. You got to pre-plan ahead. As you introduce mm -hmm. a, ne a next technology, you have to be prepared to continue. That's right. Yep, exactly. And then as you mentioned, that one of the biggest influences comes from Hollywood. So it's just, it's all over the place. So, so it's it, all of the media, all of the media. And that's what we know for sure. That's not urban legend. That is not conspiracy. That is a fact. That is a fact. There's a, there's a journalist, Carl Bernstein. He wrote a lot about how the CIA influenced media outlets. Swaying public opinion. <clears throat> and, uh, of course, you have, uh, I think you had said Mockingbird, Operation Mockingbird. That was during the Cold War era. And a lot of people believe it's still alive and well today. 
that they're absolutely uh, influencing media of all kinds, all kinds. And remember, again, the most basic form of mind control is repetition. Hearing the same thing over and over again, the constant barrage of advertising that we have, marketing that's, that's backed up by popular opinion, so culture, all these things. And social media affects millions of people. So instead of it being a family in a TV where only it was the people who had money for TV, now think about it. Everybody's got access. All these social media platforms are free. Free to be on. Because they want you there. And look, I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on all these things. Because these days, if you want to run a business, if you want to, you know, do anything, you got to be on the social media platforms. You got to reach people, but so do they. And then, of course, you have all the actors and actresses from Hollywood saying, hey, this shit is going on. Absolutely. You got Jim Carrey. That's a big one. Go look at some Jim Carrey interviews of him talking about this stuff. I mean, obviously, he doesn't come right out and say it, but he's saying it. Mel Gibson, that crazy fuck, you got him saying it. There's a whole bunch. There's a list of people, a list of actors and actresses that have come forward saying Hollywood is infiltrated by mind control, MK Ultra. But again, it goes back to the earlier question, which is, how do you prove it? It's all well and good that these people are coming forward. They're saying these things exist. You have this guy that brings this uh, lawsuit to the NSA. You have these celebrities coming forward to saying these things. It's all great. But there's no solid evidence other than what we have. And that's what we really, really need in order to turn the general public on to these things that are happening. We got to have like solid proof. I mean, obviously that's the same argument for UFOs, right? Is we got to have, we got to have solid proof. But on top of this lack of evidence, on top of this influencing, you have disinformation agents. You have misinformation that's being put out there. You have Flat out liars coming forward with fake stories, just trying to get on the radar. And propaganda that follows all that up, that just muddies the waters and makes it impossible to really get to the bottom of it. Or seemingly impossible, anyways. But here's what I, here's what I do know. We're living in a world of extremes, specifically these days. You've got extreme ideologies, extreme politics, and extremely advanced technology. And there seems to be no middle ground anywhere with these tribal attitudes of you're either with us or you're against us. Now, is this the work of these agencies that are influencing, manipulating emotions? That are, yeah, we know that they're influencing through social media and media, but is it also, is there direct influence to individuals with this technology? Do you think they're really doing it? Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? Oh, and by the way, Nate cut out, so we had to go to another medium, so that's why you might sound different. But you still sound... Yeah. Fantastic, buddy. I appreciate it. Sorry about that. Don't even, man. It fucking happens. Anyways, but again, why wouldn't they? Like you said, why wouldn't they? It's not if they, they can. They can. They have the technology. They have the techniques. They have the research. So the only question is, would they? And like you said, why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't yeah. they? We've been doing it this whole time. Why stop now? That's right. 
Everybody's had that moment in traffic where you wish you could control the mind of the guy in front of you so you could be you could just move that motherfucker out of the way. You know, go, dude. <laughs> you know, I want to put the idea in his head. Go faster. Right. So, 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 yeah. So you're trying to manipulate, you know, the entire world. And uh, yeah, of course. Now, the other question is, is this just what happens? This, this mentality that we're in that I, I feel is, is being influenced this because I've never seen this in the, as long as I've existed, I'm 40. I've never seen a more divided world in my lifetime. No, it was. So to me, this is disconcerting to say the least. So, okay. So let, so aside from weapons, manipulating emotions and reasoning of people, is there something else? Is this just what happens to civilizations towards the end of their reign? If you look back and you see these other civilizations that clearly came about, that clearly rose, we have evidence of it. Like I said, it's been, it's, it is our history. Yep. So are we destined to be what our ancestors are, just clues and symbols from a forgotten time of what we may have done, what we may or may not have done? We still don't know. How long have we been studying our ancestors, trying to figure out where we come from and, and what these civilizations were, but we, we still don't know. So what's going to be left of ours? Like what, to, you know, is that what we're destined for? Or, or is it the other option? Here's an idea. Aliens. Is it aliens manipulating humans to wipe ourselves out Clear the path for a new species to dominate the earth. Eh? Nah, nah, it's a power play. Power play. I, that's what I think too, man. That's what I think. It's a power play. It's a power play. But the most important question of all is what do you all think? I want to know. I want to know what you think about what we've just talked about. You know, the world is whole. I, I don't like to get into politics, so you can save that shit. But I do want to know, like, what you think about this type of technology, this, you know, whether agencies, intelligence agencies, while we all know they're douchey, are they actually doing this? You know? <clears throat> I want to know what you think. And I want to know if you have stories, if you have experiences, you just want to reach out, you want to email, uh, Get in contact a number of ways. Twitter is a great one. Uh, Instagram is a great one. Of course, the email. Just follow that portal to all things UFO know in the show notes. Take that link and it'll lead you straight to us. Um, and, of course, I'm building a UFO know army. Now, look, I think I'm, I think I'm changing the name. I think, uh, uh, Nathan, you gave me inspiration. I think, I, I think we're going to do tinfoil militia. Oh, that's amazing. I like that. Tinfoil right. militia. Tinfoil militia. So I, I dig that. Yeah, so I think I think that's what we're gonna do. So we are the tinfoil militia, and I thank you all for joining me and to those that are already involved in the tinfoil militia. And let me know what you think of the name, by the way. <laughs> but I want you in the ranks. So donate now. Go patreon.com slash UFO no podcast. But to my first OG supporter, the designer, tinfoil hat wearing Aaron Rice. Thank you so much for uh, getting involved. I appreciate that so much. It means the world to me. Um, of course, Casey Armadillo, first merch buyer and now member of the tinfoil militia is... Casey Armadillo, thank you so much. Michael Benavides, thank you, sir, from Roswell. Supposedly has stories. Hasn't told me any. I'm jealous. Get it to me. Uh, Michael Benavides, thank you so much. Michael Ralston, thank you, buddy. Always enjoy our conversations. Comes by the store, Clarkson CBD, by the way. And uh, and we have great conversations. Thank you, sir. Jesse, 
Man, girl, I love it. We always talk on Patreon, and it is awesome. Always has things to say about the episodes. I love it. Stay in contact. Let me know what you think. Um, Of course, Rihanna, thank you for all the shares, all the mentions. Also, for uh, being a supporter, thank you so much. And uh, Carlton Turner, new member of the Tinfoil uh, Militia, I just forgot it. Uh, thank you so much as well for your support. And, of course, as I said, you too can be a part of the UFO No Army at Patreon.com, where we are going to be releasing a new episode each and every single week, bonus episode just for the members. Of course, every episode is ad-free um, and uh, just for you. Uploaded every week. Two full episodes. And going to be trying to add new things all the time. So, of course, stay tuned. Go donate now. Thank you. It all means the world to me. Cannot tell you enough. And then, of course, for general shout-outs, Black Coast. These guys are awesome. You got to go check them out. Black Coast UK. They got a merch brand, Wet Wired. These guys rock. You got to go check them out. If you like heavy metal, even if you're not sure if you like heavy metal, Go up, pop your cherry on these guys, the Black Coats. They are amazing. Go check them out. Um, Bob Sowen, thank you, sir. You always comment on the videos. I love it. Thank you so much. Uh, keep it up, man. Casey Lisi, uh, Lisky, my good friend. Uh, of course, thank you always checking out the show. Matthew Morfitt, this guy gave me the idea to do the episode on Valiant Thor, uh, and uh, which I'm going to be doing soon. I'm just putting some shit together for Galactic Federation. Going to be doing soon. Uh, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. It means a lot, and I hope you enjoy them. Uh, and now, of course, we got a review from Vince Guzman. Uh, he thoroughly enjoyed episode 69. Thank you. So did I. It was a great show. Go check it out. Funny. Um, it's awesome. We took a great twist on it. I didn't give a shit about making fun of people. It was really, really fun. Uh Anyways, I thank you all so much. Anyone who's bought merch, please go tag UFO No Podcast on Instagram with your sweet-ass gear and help us build a portfolio of fans so we can show you off, show off the episode to be really fun and cool, and, of course, show off merch. means a lot. Thank you all. If you want to get a shout-out, just let me know in the show notes. That's it. And go and donate. It's that simple. I will give you lots of love if you give me lots of love. Uh, Simple. That's it, man. Nathan? Thank you, dude. Yeah, Thank you so much for being on, dude. What a great conversation. Oh, man. Wonderful. Thanks for having me, bro. So much fun. So much fun. So I really appreciate it. We're going to keep doing it, and uh, and that's it. Uh, check out new episode every week. But otherwise, as I always say, uh, keep your eyes to the skies, and remember, watch out for the government. And we've given you a ton of fucking reasons today. Watch out for the government. They're shoisty bastards. Bastards.